Good morning, everybody. My name is the Sobre Boys Walifatsi from the Big R. You know that the Big R Solution Sports Program will give you the sports. Um, I'm here together with my team. I've gotten 20, whom we missed on the Saturday morning. You know, we, we missed the energy of on 20 um, because he had to fly back to Jobe. And then uh, today is with us and he's far away again, as usual. He's moving around the country in Twentle. He's down in Bloemfontein. So, Twentle, you are welcome to the show, man. Oh, my brother, thank you very much, man. Mr. Tao, thank you. Uh, um, my colleague there, thank you as well. Thank you for welcoming me back, guys. I'm down in, uh, in the free state. Yeah. We're going all over the show. We're trying to get as much information as possible for you guys. And uh, we are here to share this good news with you. And um, I'd also like to welcome the, our, our, the, the Big R community members. And uh, I like the energy. I like the, the, the way you guys are participating. I mean, there's, I, can't, I can't call you with all the names. There's plenty. Mm. But we'd like to appreciate the contribution that you guys are giving to us. And uh, we are definitely here to share all the, these uh, good news and developments with you guys out there, wherever you are. And remember that it has been a, a very hectic kind of a weekend with all the games taking place, with all the good news and the bad news taking place. And here we are today. We are definitely coming to share everything with you guys. And uh, before I can continue further, Mr. Dao, thank you very much for the slot. Let me come back to you so that uh, you can be able to give me a way forward there. Thank you, sir. All right, let's welcome Last Born. Last Born, uh, we're the only, you know, two brigades on Saturday morning. <laughs> uh, no, no. Nevertheless, uh, our, 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 our partner in crime has, has joined us today, at least uh, this morning we are energetic. Yeah. Uh, Last Born, welcome to the show. Yes, yes. Uh, thank, thanks for having me, Mr. Shawalala. Um, good morning to the viewers out there. And uh, to you also, Mr. Jackie. Hey, he's, he's a tourist these days. He's traveling everywhere. He's <laughs> trying to get news for us. <laughs> week in, week out. Week in, week out. It's just everywhere. It's all over the country. So, yeah, man. But yeah. yeah, it's great to have him back. And thanks again to the Big Art community. Um, you know, uh, without you guys, we are nothing. Thanks for the contributions, you know. Our, the show is growing and it's good to interact, you know, with, with our fellow community members also out there. So, yeah, we hope to give you what well, we've got interesting news this morning. So, yeah, there's a lot that we're going to share today and we hope that everyone enjoys the show. Let me tell you the good news. Um, you know, over the weekend, we saw that uh, some of our people are commenting and some comment on my private uh, WhatsApp. And then we decided to create uh, the Big R Solution Sports Program Community WhatsApp. And then uh, I can tell you already we have about 19 people there in that group. And I can tell you the energy and the information that I get. I can tell you I've got a guy, Collins, who's down in um, uh, Sentin. Uh, very participating, helping us, waterfall to be precise. And then uh, Fraser, as usual, Fraser Kekana here in Beshley. And then uh, we also have Jack in Twentley. You know, he's, he's all over the country. He's always with us all the time. And then um, and um, I see also that uh, we're also joined by a new member from Bethlehem, for that matter. And then he's a friend of mine, a long-time friend of mine, uh, uh, Tebo Holdebeko. And then he made some excellent contributions on, uh, on, on the community. And then, uh, as usual, uh, Mr. Mpiani Rolt also made his sharp contribution. And then uh, he still argues that, uh, nah, nah, sundowns, they are not the kings. Let's wait. And then we'll see. And then uh, also, Tsepang uh, Kole, uh, last born, also contributed a lot. 
and then Walter, uh, uh, Walter in the Northern Cape, uh, uh, Kimberley to be precise. Uh, these are the people who contributed a lot on the, on the community. I can tell you, even today, I've been checking the news. The guys have been contributing continuously, giving us the news. And some are very exciting, you know, it's jokes, but what is good, there is no animosity. It's a question of, uh, you know, uh, enjoying football and talk as much as we can. Gentlemen, thank you for doing that. And then uh, I wish you continue to contribute uh, in the community side. Guys, come today, uh, Tuesday morning. The big news that we need to talk about, which I want uh, the people to really tell us what do they think, is the European Super League, which has been mooted uh, in, the, in the weekend. And then it's coming. It's got a lot of money. And there's a whole lot of fight. You know, everybody's fighting. And then uh, some people are against it. Some people believe that uh, it's the way to go. But nevertheless, we'll talk about it. We want to hear your views. Is the Super League a good idea or a bad idea? Uh, if it's a good idea, why say it's a good idea? If it's a bad idea, why say it's a bad idea? But we'll talk during that time. Let's go straight to uh, Ntwentle. Sepa uh, will lead us as far as the Europe Super League. I think he has done a lot of work as far as that is concerned. And the other thing that we'll be discussing during the European football, of course, we are going to discuss Copa uh, del Rey, a very exciting game. We are going to discuss Mourinho. We are going to discuss what's happening in Italy. Um, is Juventus going to win the league for the 10th time uh, in a row, or this time they will never win it? Uh, what's happening? What's happening in Spain? It's neck and neck, you know, in Spain, it's hot. We saw Real Madrid losing points yesterday. And then in England, it's also hot. But nevertheless, let's come to home. Jackie, let's talk about uh, our football in South Africa. Give us the news. And then uh, today I want us to talk about Orlando Pirates. Uh, I know we watch Orlando Pirates and then uh, we've been saying a whole lot about Orlando Pirates. So probably if you can talk about that, what's what's your take about the game that you saw uh, yesterday? Jackie, lead Thank us. you very much, my brother. Thank you very much. And then uh, thank you for the slot. Yeah, it's very much interesting now within the Premier Soccer League. Our league is very exciting, guys. It's attracting big name coaches and big name players that are coming to our league. So which basically tells us we are doing something good. Something good is happening in our league. Shortly, I will just give you the results, which are the games are played from the 12th of April, 2021. There was a big game that was uh, hosted by uh, Chipa United in the in, in, in the Far Eastern Cape. Chipa United was playing against Mamelodi Sundowns, and Sundowns scored two goals, and then Chipa won. Those two goals by Mamelodi Sundowns, they were they, they they collected valuable points, and those two goals they were scored by uh, uh, Peter Shalulile, as well as uh, um, that youngster of of Sanos. I'll tell you the name right now. And then Chipa United, they are in danger because they are busy losing these games. It's very important that they should start collecting points. It is very important, definitely, to do that because you know what these games are very very uh, dangerous at this time of the year, of, of the season. And then on the fifteenth as well. We had a game between uh, Kaiser Chiefs and Baroka FC. This was an away game for Kaiser Chiefs played in uh, in Limpopo. Kaiser Chiefs scored first on that particular uh, uh, game, and then uh, Baroka equalized in the second half, just towards the end of the game, and that game uh, ended up at one all. And then on the 18th, we had a game between uh, Orlando Pirates, which was played at Orlando Stadium and they played against Marisbeck United. One thing for sure I must really say is that Orlando Pirates, they came up well prepared. Orlando Pirates, they came up with very good strategy and Orlando Pirates, they, they exerted pressure from the first minute. But Marisbeck as well, they played very well 
especially during the, the, the first 40, 15 minutes, they were attacking Walono parents relentlessly. Unfortunately, uh, they couldn't score. One thing for sure that I've, I've realized with Orlando Pirates, we know that Orlando Pirates, what they do, they will pressurize you. They will pressurize you and then they will play with the wings. But this time what they did, they played with the wings and mostly they come into the middle field and then they score. Or they, they attack you, they use counter attack most of the time. And then what I've also, uh, I'm impressed with is the fact that it looks like the coach is listening to us as football lovers. He listens to us very carefully because if you can realize uh, the captain himself, he was not there. <laughs> Jail, he was not there. Mm. I was very impressed with a young star with the name of uh, Sisane. He was playing uh, 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 the right back. He's a, he, he played very well. He did very well. I don't think that he will be replaced as soon as possible. No, he did very well. So which tells us that Orlando Perez, they do have depth. All that they need to do now is to make sure that they give other, other players a chance, like the coach did yesterday. I'm very impressed with Orlando Pirates. They played very well. They showed that championship character yesterday. They exerted more pressure. As you saw, the goalkeeper of Marisbeck, he ended up uh, heading, heading this ball to his own net. And then it was just a, 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 an easy finish um, by Orlando Pirates. And they won that game 2-0. Actually, they should have won that game by 4 0 or 5 because they were definitely on top of Murray's back. Well done to the Orlando Pirates team. And then I can see that they wanted to pay that revenge. The pain that they felt against Mamelody Sundowns really, really, it made them to be more hungry and it made them to be more aggressive. And watch this space. Orlando Pirates is still one of the contenders in the league. And then right now, it's another time whereby. You know what? Each and every point counts. And Orlando Paris, they're still continuing for the league. And watch this space. They might even end up winning this particular league. And that's that's just my opinion. I'm not saying it's going to be, but that's my opinion. The way I saw the way they played yesterday. I mean, I mean, it doesn't it, it, it doesn't take uh, uh, so much to, to, to analyze that Orlando Pirates are playing very good football. Yeah, that's all I've got in terms of uh, Orlando Pirates. And then I will give you some uh, quick... Uh, breaking news, which are taking place locally. There's so much that is taking place right now. Mamelody Sundowns, it is rumored that they have signed a Slovakian striker who is exactly this type of a striker, like uh, 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 the one of Kaiser Chiefs. And then I'm talking about Vemezovic, Nurkovic. They signed this player for, for, for 12 million rand. And it looks like Next season, he will be coming to play uh, for Mamlady Sundowns. And then Kaiser Chiefs, there's a, a player from Amazulu with the name of Mabiliso. It is rumored that he has already completed the signing of the contract. All that is needed now is for him to start to play for Kaiser Chiefs next season. So there's so much that is taking place as well. Uh, Bradley Krobler, who is now playing for Super Sport United, he commented and said that he's willing to come and play for Kaiser Chiefs on one condition. Only if Gavin Hunt decides to stay, then he will come and play for Kaiser Chiefs. So you will hear all those rumors. There's plenty of rumors that are taking place at the moment. That is the time. So we will talk more when we once we get more information on that. So in a nutshell, that's all I can be able to tell you right now about our our soccer, our, our local soccer league, uh, gentlemen. Let me come back to you, Mr. Dow. Thank you very much, guys. Do you think it's a fair thing for the player to say, I can come on one condition if, if you retain the coach? Uh, if you ask me where I'm coming from, I wouldn't like uh, such a player to come to my team, one. Uh, it's like a player who comes to the team and say, and the majority of players do it, if I can be guaranteed that I'm going to play 50% or 70% of the season game, for me, that's wrong. That's wrong. Your, your form should be the one that talks for you. Don't come with conditions. Um, and the team, you know, Kaiser Chiefs, um, well, it depends where do they want to go. But knowing Chiefs, they won't fire Gavin Hunt soon. Chiefs keep 
but I don't think that that's the attitude. Uh, because let's look at this way. He comes problem, all right? And then uh, on merit, Gavin Hyde plays him and plays him over and over. What are you telling other players? Are you saying because you came have, having put a condition that if uh, the coach doesn't leave, then I'm going to come. If he, leave, I'm, uh, if he leaves, I'm not coming. I don't think I don't think it's on. But uh, you you can have your say, guys, quickly. Uh, uh, last one, what's your take on that one? And I'll also come to Pirates quickly and then pass. I'll say one thing, last one will say one thing. And then because you have already said something, uh, Jackie. No, um, I think it's a matter of preference, uh, uh, Mr. Shabalala. Um, if, if, if he thinks that by having Kevin Hunt on his side, he understands the way he plays, uh, then he clearly uh, thinks that he will deliver, knowing that if Kevin Hunt knows how he plays, how how he can use him, then, then yeah, then I guess it's going to work for him. But now the problem is, what if it doesn't work out? So that's something that we should also bear in mind. And at the age that is in also, age plays a factor. Bradley Krobler is not getting any younger and he's old, to be honest. So, yeah, that also plays a role. But I think he's got confidence because he's the top goal scorer in the league at the moment. So why not? He's got every right to talk that way, to be honest. So it's not like he scored two goals. He's got 13 goals within him at the moment. So... He's got every right to speak the way he's speaking at the moment. So I think that also can shut a lot of people up, you know, because they've got nothing to say to him. He's, he's, he's on merit, he's doing good. So, but also why not? Yeah, so it's a 50-50 situation at the moment. So that's that's my opinion about yeah. it. Uh, Tau, uh, sorry, man, just to add on something. Eh? Uh, there's one aspect that I forgot to mention. And I don't want... Uh, uh, um, my friends to from Sundowns and uh, and Pirates and say uh, I didn't say this this kind of results. Mm. I forgot to mention the results in terms of uh, the Net Bank Cup. Mm. Mm. Um, if you allow me just two seconds, then I can just quickly give these uh, results for the, for the Net Bank Cup. Okay. Yeah, on the 15th there was a game that was played between Mamelodi Sundowns and Orlando Pirates, and the score there was Mamelodi Sundowns four, Orlando Pirates one. We know what happened on that particular game, and then it was such a disaster for, for Pirates. And then also, we got a game between Pretoria Kellys that played against Chipper United. It was a home game for Pretoria Kellys. The guys did well. They played very well. They tried their luck. Unfortunately, they lost that game by 1-0 to Chipper United. And then uh, we had also another game that was played. This game was uh, 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 postponed for, for quite some time. And then the game, it was between Mamlodi Sundowns as well as Chakuma Chamas Vandela. So that game, it went to, into extra time after it ended up at 0-0. And then after extra time, it went to uh, penalties. Um, it went to penalties. And then still after penalties, for the first five penalties, it was uh, a draw again. And then it, it went to sudden death. Mamlodi Sundowns lost. They scored only five. And Chakuma Chamas Vandela scored six. So which to- automatically tells us that for the very first time in the competition, Chipa United and, and Chakuma, it's position number 14 and 15. They've already qualified for the league, for, for the for the final. So it's very strange. It's, it's, it's for the first time that kind of everything happens. All the big guns are out. So we are happy with that. It's very good for the teams. It's very good for the for football. And it's very good for the sponsors as well. So we are looking forward to that particular game, to that final. And then remember that one of those teams, if they win that net bank cup, they will qualify to play in the Confederations Cup. That's all I wanted to mention uh, uh, quickly before I can be able to give you the slot back. Thank um, you very much for the opportunity, my brother. Yeah. We'll also talk about uh, uh, TTM and Chipa. Yes. Remember, we've been criticizing them. So we need to look at these results and talk about it. So I want you to comment about what's your take about a player like uh, Bradley Hobler saying, I'll go if this man is there. Uh, Tsepang says he's good, he's confident, he thinks the coach understanding better. I'm saying he wants to tell the team what to do. 
Uh, and I think the, the, the team, they can decide to fire Gavin Hunt and hire another coach. You can't dictate to the team. That, that's my belief. You know, it's like a player saying, I'll come only if I'm guaranteed I'll play. How can we guarantee you will play? And then what if you're off for? That, that's my argument. So what's your take on that one? My brother, I think Tsepang mentioned that it's a matter of preference. Mm. I also I agree with Tsepang on that. Mm. The reason being, you know, if I've worked with a coach before, mm. I know his tactics, I know his methodologies, I know everything about the coach. It will be much easier. I'll be more productive because I, I know my mentor. I know how he wants us to play. And I know that uh, he will be able to also improve me. He will add value in, 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 into his coaching sessions. Mm -hmm. So it, it's always nicer if you, if you know this coach, you've played, you played with him, you've played for him. And then it will be much better if you are getting signed by the coach, not the management. Because the management can sign you without consulting the coach, which is wrong. At the end of the day, you'll end up being frustrated as a player because the coach never signed you. He didn't need, he didn't see any necessity for signing you, but the management signed you. End of the day, you end up being uh, 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 frustrated and then uh, you want to leave the team and go to another team. No, it's fine. Um, I hear what you are saying. Let's move quickly to Orlando Pirates. We have already had an input. I think it's my turn to have an input of, of uh, myself and, and last one. Osborne, what's your input about Orlando Pirates? Um, no, Mr. Chavala, um, they, 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 I think they redeemed themselves within the uh, the league game that they played against Marysburg United. They really came through. Um, they done everything well. It was great seeing um, that youngster uh, Sasane, um, as Mr. Jake has explained. Um, he was even man of the match in that game. So the boy played well, 19 year old. So yeah, that says a lot, you know. Um, seeing the likes of Happy Jail, Tyson, yeah, Tyson. I I don't know how many times I said this word about Lachwayo in the past couple of weeks that um he hasn't gotten it right at Orlando Pirates. Um, something is wrong there. I don't know what's wrong with his performance, but he's just too wild. I don't know what's going on. So um, it was good seeing them. Just to relax a bit, they deserve a, they deserve the bench. You, yes, you can be our national team captain; it's fine. But when you're not on form, you're not on form. I mean, Mshishi last season when Peter was still around, there was a time where he was off form. When the the PSL uh, resumed, when they were playing in the Bio Bible, couple of games, Timbers one was off form. He sat on the bench for like two games. He was just a sub, two to three games around there. Then what he, what happened? His form came back, he revived himself, and luckily he was player of the season. So it's good that even big players should sit on the bench. Yeah. You shouldn't, doesn't matter if you're not doing good on merit, you must stay on the bench. Yeah. So it was good seeing that. I think the coach took a very huge decision in that, and it actually worked out for them. The boys played well. So this is what we expect from Orlando Pirates, but it's, it's a matter of inconsistency. I mean, one week they're playing good, then the next week they're not playing good. So they win games, they lose games, they win games, they lose games. So they're just not consistent. So it's something that we've been crying about for the past couple of weeks. So I think for them, it's just a matter of finishing the season strong at a comfortable position. And yeah, it's good at least they have a trophy this season. They've got something within the cabinet. So yeah, that's that's my opinion now. Um, what I can say about Orlando Pirates is um, uh, Pirates, what I've noticed. Pirates, I think, uh, is one of uh, one of the team that brings a lot of young stars into our football, which is very, very positive. Um, there's a whole lot of uh, young stars who are playing at Pirates, and they're playing a very beautiful football. Uh, in fact, they were playing well, just like uh, Jackie was saying that uh, they could have won by four. Not only that, and like Jackie indicated, that uh, the coach seems to be listening. And that is why we didn't see Happy Jale and probably uh, Tyson Flatra. Uh, for me, a big up to the coach. He's doing well. And as I said, the guy has something to show. In the in the cabin, he has already won a title. So let's move on quickly 
The other thing that I want us to discuss about is um, the, 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 the cup final between uh, TTM and Chipa United. What a revelation. We have been hammering mm-hmm. on TTM and uh, it means that uh, the guy who has bought T- TTM definitely has a, he had a plan. And I can tell you TTM was playing very well. To be honest, you know, if, if truth must be told, Sandow should have lost in the 90 minutes. They shouldn't have even gone to extra time. Uh, there was a clear penalty that uh, TTM should have uh, been awarded. But at the same time, you know, I need to also be uh, fair to the referee. I could see that he was, the positioning was not good for the referee. So I don't think he saw uh, well that, uh, you know, that sliding, he didn't touch the ball, instead he touched the man. So uh, on the basis of that, um, I I would say, um, you know, maybe hard luck, but TTM, they are playing a very, a very, very beautiful football. It's not that you cannot say this is the team that had all these kind of problems. This team that is somewhere uh, down there fighting for relegation. For me, I, I saw them like uh, a team that will never go to uh, gladiator, let Africa. So uh, I was very much impressed. So, and then uh, you guys, what's your take? Chipa United, we have been hammering on Chipa Mpengesi that what's happening. And I see that he has appointed a guy by the name of Morgan Mamai, Mamila as the team manager uh, to the team. So I don't know, what's your take? Uh, Jackie, do you want to say something? I think that's a very good appointment mm-hmm. because Morgan Mamila, remember he was uh, the CEO of... Uh, your Pulukwane City. Mm. And he left Pulukwane City and then went to Chipa, then he left Chipa. Now he's back again. Mm. It's good that he's got now, he's appointed a CEO who will be able to talk on behalf of the team. Mm. Mr. Chipa Mpengese should be able to focus on other things, is not in terms of media and everything like that. But mm. Mr. Miller will be able, Mamila will be able to add value in terms of in the team. Is Only it- if he can be able to, to be given an opportunity more yeah. enough time so that he can be able to settle down and be able to produce whatever that he knows. He's a very good gentleman. Yeah, as I say, he's a team manager, not the CEO. Oh, he's a team manager. Oh, yes. Yeah, let's yes. move on quickly. And then I also want to touch on something quickly. Uh, I hear that uh, the guy by Louis Concalves, all right, who happened to be a former Cristiano Ronaldo coach is interested to come to the PSL. Well, I hope I hope this will be done correctly because I saw things happen in South Africa whereby Quaros, uh, Carlos Quiroz was given the, the head coach of Bafana Bafana because he discovered Cristiano Ronaldo, but he never produced anything. He went to Man United, uh, you know, same, same credential were used and then he was given uh, to coach the national squad, Portuguese national squad. For me, I don't know whether it was a question that he discovered Cristiano Ronaldo, that, and then that gave him now, uh, you know, the, 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 the people think that he's the good coach. Well, of course, Alex Ferguson talks highly of him, talks highly of him. But the fact of the matter is you must prove yourself uh, at your work. So I didn't see Carlos Quiroz proving himself at his work. So I hope PSL teams are not going to be tempted that this guy was a former coach of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo, then let's appoint him. That That's my opinion. I don't know what's your take there, quickly. Yeah, well, there's a, a rumor as well that says uh, he's going to be coming to the PSL, but we don't know which team. Mm. I don't think that he, he will be able to come to the PS because he's not, he doesn't come cheap. Mm. He's very expensive. Mm. It's like uh, Pereira. Remember Pereira? Mm. Mm. There's a rumor as well that he's going to come and coach in the PSM. I don't think that is, that is true because he's, he's not coming cheap as well. So no. I, 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 I don't support all these coaches who are coming from wherever and then coming. At the moment, we've got our own coaches 
that are having knowledge and that are, that are experienced. We need to give them a chance. You've got our coaches there, but Benny McCarthy there. They need to be given a chance as well so that they can be able to show us what is it that they've got. So I think it's about time whereby Safa looks local and it looks like they are going that route now, right now. No, no, I'm, I'm not arguing about the, the, the money that is going to cost us. Am I saying, should we appoint the person because he was a former coach of uh, Cristiano Ronaldo? You know, we used, <laughs> have, we used to have Paige on our platform here. I can tell you, yes. you listen to Paige, you can hear this guy's got a lot of knowledge about football. He played football. I think those are the people that uh, should be given the opportunity to coach. You know, you know, Tembanguenya, uh, who's the technical director at Sundowns, I'm told he's one of the best coaches, good coaches, including Jerry, Jerry Kosan. I'm told that Jerry is good as a coach. So those are people that need to be given an opportunity to coach. Uh, that, that's my view. We still have people like Khabu Zondo, um, you know, uh, give them the opportunity rather than bringing a person because he was a former coach. Because I'm taking that example of Carlos, uh, Carlos Kiros and say that's how he came. And what did he do? Uh, Ferguson here spoke well about him, but he hasn't shown anything uh, that, that say, uh, you know, Carlos Kiros. You know, Carlos Pereira better. He has won a World Cup. All right, as a player and as a coach. So, you know, th that's a different thing altogether. And Peter Musimana said he has learned from Carlos Quiros a lot. So that, that is understandable. Remember, Carlos Quiros is the first guy who identified Peter to say this guy should continue. Not necessarily to identify him as a coach, but he said this guy's got potential. And, yes. and that's, that shows that this guy understands football. And then he saw, and look, Pito is doing well. He's doing well. He won again uh, over the weekend, beating the arc rival, um, uh, Samalek. Samalek. And, then, um, and then they are doing well. Yes, they are leading the lock by three, three points, uh, but it looks good for Pito, you know? So this is the thing that I'm talking about and say, don't just appoint people because they come with this kind of a name. And guys quickly, I want to move on the lock. Are we guys saying definitely Mamluri Sundowns will win the league? Because if I look at the lock here, they have played 20 games, all right? And then they have 46 points. Amazon, we don't talk about Amazon, guys. We don't talk about KZN emerging again in local football. Amazon played 22 games, 40 points. That's six points uh, difference. And then, uh, of course, Two games in hand does not mean points are in the pocket, all right? And then the Golden Arrows, they are also number three, 22 games, 38 points. And Orlando Paris, same thing, all right? So uh, I'm not saying Sundowns cannot win. And I gain on Friday, uh, on Saturday morning, I want us to have this topic. Do we think that Mamelodi Sundowns will finish the league with unbeaten? Remember that record was set by Arsenal. All right. Barcelona nearly broke that record, but unfortunately, they lost. Uh, Arsenal uh, is the only team that has uh, gone through the scene without losing, but Mamelodi Sundown, they look determined to do that. We'll have to debate that one uh, come next week. So, yeah, we'll see what's happening. Uh, guys, shall we move to Europe uh, quickly? Uh, last one, do you want to give us the, the results and what is happening in uh, Italy, if you have? Jackie, oh, okay. you can in the meantime also look at the, at the English and then also we need to talk about Mourinho. And the, and, the, and the hot topic, the Super League. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Shabala, the results in the Premier League. Yeah. Um, this past weekend, um, we had a game of uh, Wolves. Wolves played, Wolves played against um, 
against Sheffield United. Sheffield United lost. It's unfortunately that they lost the game and they relegated now. Wolves won that game by one goal to one. Uh, sad to say that Sheffield United is relegated and then they are out of the Premier League. Uh, and then Newcastle. Newcastle played against West Ham. West Ham. Yes, it's just unfortunate that they they nearly snatched a point just in the game. They were losing by two goals to zero. They managed to come back. It was a two-all draw. But Newcastle snatched the winner and they won the game by three goals to two. Mm. And then Arsenal played against Fulham. Also, Fulham is in hot waters also, actually, at the moment. Um, Arsenal won that game. Oh, they drew that game by, uh, it was a one-all draw. Arsenal won, Fulham won. And then Man United Wow, that was a good turnaround, actually. That was a very interesting game. Um, they played against Burnley. Man United won the game by three goals to one. So now Man City is leading by just eight points. So Man United are eight points behind Man City. So this is very tight. It's getting tight at the top. And then Leeds United. Oh, yes. So those are the, those are the results. And then the fixtures coming up. We've got Leeds United playing against Liverpool. And then we've got Chelsea versus uh, Brighton FC. So, yes, those are the results and fixtures in the Premier League. And then we've got news also within the Premier League that Jose Mourinho has been sacked. A few days before, Tottenham Hotspurs plays the Carabao Cup final. So that's also a contributing factor like, um, I, I personally don't think that was a wise decision for Tottenham Hotspurs to actually do that because I personally think that it destabilizes the whole team's morale. And even players took on social media, actually. It was very interesting. Even um, uh, the they, they number seven, uh, Son, the, 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 the Korean, he actually took on social media that he's very heartbroken of what happened and the decision that was taken. He doesn't know what happened, but he was very sad that the news when the news broke out and that Jose Mourinho is no no longer in the club also so he that he was very emotional about it and you know he actually congratulated uh, his former coach Mourinho for all the work that he has done for him and he he believes that he's the one coach that brought so much within him so yeah in leading to that point um ah, it's 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 I personally feel it's a bad move for Tottenham but you know. Jose, we could say that his time has passed, but, you know, also on the other hand, I think that he's got a good agent, you know, um, certain things that, you know, in life, certain things that when you see that are about to happen, it's good that he has a good agent on his side. And by the way, his agent is also an agent to Cristiano Ronaldo. So this is one of the best agents in the world, actually. And that guy's a billionaire. He's a, a, a multi-billionaire and he's a very good agent. So, you know, having a guy like that as your agent also, you know, uh, Jose Mourinho cashed in uh, when his stats came out in the past couple of years that he has been sacked by the clubs. He has made more money, actually, um, leading up to 100 million so far. So business-wise, he's comfortable, you know, but uh, his reputation also is playing a huge uh, it's taking a huge knock and it's playing a huge role within his career at the moment. So maybe it's advisable to say Jose Mourinho should just start coaching the national team at this moment. And yeah, club football, I think for him, his time has run out. So yeah, so those are the news in England regarding everything and that situation. Yeah, Jose has, has, has made almost 100 million. Um, I think it's Euro. Um, uh, over the years, but it's pounds. I think it's pounds. And, yeah, it's pounds. It's pounds. And um, um, how did that come about? Chelsea, when they sack him, they gave him eight million pounds. Real Madrid, when they sack him, seventeen million pounds. Chelsea sack him again, twelve point five million pounds. Manchester United sack him again, fifteen million pounds. Tottenham Hotspurs, they give him 34 million pounds. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, if you ask me, I would say to Mourinho, uh, the time has come. You know, you need to know when to leave. Just like, say, Alec Ferguson. 
And then, uh, you know, the next move, if, if I was advising, leave, go and become an analyst on television, go and write books, one, or go to academies, you know, and, and, and take your knowledge there. And then um, I think he, um, Jose, you can see now football has changed. Um, you, you now, remember, Jose has, I don't think, has beaten Guardiola more than twice mm -hmm. in, in, in his history. Uh, and that shows that Guardiola, in terms of tactics and knowledge, is far ahead of him. Guardiola has beaten him since from Barcelona time, uh, Bayern Munich in England. So when things are happening this way, that means now we are a little bit stagnant now. So maybe you need to move on. You know, Alex Ferguson decided at the right time while he was still high there. He left, he retired. Uh, because Jose, Jose is still young. Uh, he can still add value in terms of being a television analyst. And then uh, if I were him, I would say write books. Uh, like I said, go to academy. That's me, you know. And probably you guys may have a different view. And the other good news, Leicester City, after I think it's 45 years or 50 years, they have qualified to the FA Cup, you know, and then which is good news, which is good news to see uh, Leicester doing that. And I think it will be a nice um, a goodbye message uh, to a person like Jamie Vardy. You know, Jamie Vardy, Vardy has been loyal to Leicester City, and then it would be nice for him to win a title. I'm not saying they'll win a title, but it would be a very good thing for them to win a title. And then, uh, Jackie, do you want to go to Italy quickly? Yeah. Time is at least us. While you are still checking, Jackie, let me move on quickly and let me take you to La Liga um, while you are still checking. Um, now, in terms of La Liga, let's talk about Copa del Rey. Um, Barcelona has won Copa del Rey, and now they were winning for the thirty-first time. They were winning the Copa del Rey, which is really good. Uh, Lionel Messi was on top of the game; he did extremely well. Not only Lionel Messi, uh, also uh, what's his name again? Uh, also, um, Frankie Dion. Frankie Dion, now you can see he's maturing well now. Frankie Dion is starting to exact his presence now that I have arrived. So, in fact, Frankie Dion was man of the match. And then when they were doing the ratings, uh, Messi was given 8.5. And then out of 10... Frankie de Jong was given 9.5. But have you, if you watch those goals, the goal that was scored by Messi, I know that guy, he's a genius. He's out of this world. You know, the first goal that he scored, <laughs> no, they were playing the Messi football. As I was saying, mm -hmm. when Messi gives you ball, he wants it back. When Messi gives, that's what they did with Frankie de Jong, and and they did well. They did well. The goal that he scored is out of this world. You know, I hear the guy from a player, one of the solid defenders of West Ham United said, you know what, this man, this goal is ridiculous. You know, and then he said, I wish this guy can come and play for, for West Ham before he retires. Uh, that's how good Lionel Messi is. And I saw something very, very, very uh, unbelievable. I saw the players of Barcelona shooting with him, all of them, you know, one-on-one, uh, -on -one, they want, and it happens spontaneous. That's how great Messi is. You know, as, as you know, we'll do the Messi special. Jackie, let's move to Italy before we talk about Super, Super League. Let me just give you the quick results on the, on the, on, on La Liga. No. Sorry, on, on, on the Italian League. Serie A. Yeah, we had games on the, from, from the 17th of April. Uh, Croton was playing against Udinese. 
Udinez that one that came 2-1, Sampdoria 3, and Hellas Verona 1, and then Sassuolo uh, scored 3 goals, and Fiorentina scored 1. Cagliari 4, Parma 3. And then the next feature, it was AC Milan against Genoa. The scores are AC Milan 2, Genoa 1, Bologna 4, Spezia 1, Lazio 5, uh, Benevento 3, and then also Atalanta 1, Juventus 0, Torino 3, Roma 1, and Napoli 1, and Inter Milan 1. Those are the results for, 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 for the Italian league. And uh, with, the, with uh, the last top four, sorry, the last top four, the top four quickly. Uh, it's coming now. There we go. Inter Milan, they played 31 games, collected 75 points. I know they're on a roll. Mm. AC Milan, 31 games, 66 points. Atalanta, number three, 31 games, and they've scored, uh, they've collected 64 uh, games, I mean points. And number four is Juventus, playing 31 games and collecting 62 points. Mm. That is the top four for the Italian league. Okay. Thank you very much, my brother. Let me come back to you. Now let's go to uh, Spanish La Liga top four quickly. Atletico Madrid did one game, 70 points. Real Madrid at number two, uh, did one game, uh, 67 uh, points. Uh, Barcelona at number uh, three, 30 games, 65 points. Sevilla at number four, did one uh, games, and then 64 points. So we're going to see what's going to happen. Barcelona is playing this coming Thursday. So we're going to see. Guys, let's talk about the Super League. What's your take about the Super League? Uh, Tsepang, just lead us about the Europe Super League. Yes, yes, Mr. Chabalal. Um, The European Super League, yes, yeah, it's, it's causing a lot of stare worldwide. This is the biggest topic in football history, whether it's locally or international. It's just a talking point at the moment. But... um. It's, it's said that uh, 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 an outside league is being formed. Um, big teams, I think it's, well, the, the, by the look of things, it seems like big teams within different leagues are actually proposed to starting this league, are supposed to even participate in this league. So, But now um, there's, a, there's just a lot of speculations, um, boycotting that's going around that, you know, um, well, certain fans in certain clubs don't want the league to progress, I mean, to happen. And players also don't want to participate also within the league. So I don't know how is that, that's going to work out. But also board directors, executives within all of these big teams apparently are the ones that decided that um, this over the weekend that this league should start partaking. So... Hey, everyone is just caught by surprise. Um, I saw um, Alegana Socia's interview also during the weekend. He was asked about it after the Man United game. Um, he said he doesn't know anything. He just woke up in the morning and he just saw the news. And then he doesn't know what's going to happen or what's the leak about. So he doesn't know anything. He doesn't have any details regarding that. But he will further know as details will be confirmed also at the club, they will be told what they have to do, but he doesn't have anything at the moment, so he doesn't even want to comment about it. But yeah, these are the news going on, and certain clubs, like your FC Portos, don't want to participate within the league. So the league consists, apparently, it's it's going to have two, 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 league, two, two groups. So Group A and B, both groups will consist of 10 teams if I'm not mistaken. And yeah, and the top two teams within the leagues are the ones that are going to progress within straight up. I think, no, top four. I think, yeah, top four teams within the groups will automatically qualify for the quarterfinals and so forth going forward. So yeah, and the league is proposed to start in August. It will be played during the week. So it's a midweek league. So I don't know how that's going to happen because... Um, I think there's just so many leagues going on at the moment, but it seems like they've they have a plan already. And the chairman of the league will be Florentino Perez. So this is the Real Madrid president uh, Real Madrid president. So he's the one that's going to be in charge well within the league. And it's also alleged that um our FIFA president, uh Alexander Sh- uh Ship, if I'm not mistaken, yeah, he he is 
totally against the whole league. He doesn't want the league to progress. And he says that um, if players will be involved in the league, then they shouldn't participate even in their respective countries in the European Championships and the World Cup. So, yeah, that's just, uh, yeah, they should be banned, actually. So it's causing a lot of confusion. But the uh, Florentino Perez states that this league is going to progress. It's happening. And, yeah, a lot of things are just happening. Well, it's causing a lot of commotion. So, yeah, these are big news, actually. So we don't know what's going to happen going forward. Okay, let me tell you uh, this, that... um... You know the big R. We are dealing with finance. That's 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 what we are doing with the big R. And then um, we are talking sport and football because there's a whole lot of money in football and sport, and people love sport. So that is the reason why we are doing this show. And let me tell you what is the issue uh, at hand. The the crux of the matter. The real issue is money. Nothing else. Money. I think the top teams, they have been complaining that they want more money from the Champions League. And then apparently this was not forthcoming. Um, So that's one of the things that probably prompted this. Now, let me take you to science. Science says what goes up will always come down. All right? So there are times whereby, you know, Things will grow, 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 reach at a, a, a stage whereby they can't grow further than where they are, and then they bust. <laughs> I'm not saying that's what's going to happen to football. I'm just giving you the theories in life that are happening. And then uh, we know what happened when half a lung was taken out uh, of FIFA hierarchy. There was a whole lot of commotion. It's all about money. It's all about politics in earnest, all right? And then Seb Blatter, same thing, all right? It's all about money, power, politics. That's all what is happening. And we have seen it here in South Africa when your like of Kaiser Mutahu, Jomo Sono, and then uh, they were fighting against the dominance of, uh, by that time they were saying, I don't know whether... The old man that did uh, George Chavis still alive. They were saying they were very tyrannic. They were they, they were tyrant. All right, they were ruling with iron fist. They didn't have a say, and they want they wanted to have a stake in the money that is being generated. So apparently, this team that is their gripe, and then uh, as a counter to that. Uh, UEFA Champions League was about to announce the reform. Well, the issue is about money, basically. And we don't know whether uh, they will stop it or not. Uh, Of course, we don't know. (laughs) Look, I'm not saying I'm for or I'm against. I'm just giving you how these things evolve at some point. Remember, the teams that have already agreed, and that will tell you uh, the power play, you know. You have Arsenal. These are the big boys, Chelsea, Liverpool, Manchester City, Manchester United, Tottenham Hotspurs. Those are the English teams that have already agreed. You have uh, Spanish teams, Atletico Madrid, Barcelona, and Real Madrid. Those are the Spanish teams. We go to Italy. You have AC Milan, Inter Milan, Juventus. I don't know whether they will stop this pass. Those are the news that I'm giving you, and I'm also giving you history that uh, we have seen it happen. It happened here at home. And then we were told, no, 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 the PSL will never happen. Uh, It happened big time. All right? It happened big time. So if you are a student of history, you must read what happened in the past. So I'm saying nothing grows, 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 grows. And then, uh, you know, you reach a stage, you know. Of course, FIFA should resist. Because they are threatening their livelihood. They are threatening their their influence, their control (laughs) on football. UEFA, of course, they they have to resist. And we hear news that people who are behind this is uh, JP Morgan Bank in America. Uh, That's a rumor. I'm not saying that's a fact. That's a rumor. 
some people are saying people like JP Morgan they want influence in in football because they know how powerful football is football is so powerful guys it's not only football the sport it's football and business you know the business attached to football how big it is all right you heard when people were talking about Lionel Messi is earning a lot of money then um, Batman said, no, no, you don't know what you're talking about. This guy is bringing a whole lot of money to us. And that's part of the deal for him to get whatever that he's getting. Hey, hey, you know what? It's all about television rights. There's a whole lot of politics involved in this thing. So let's, let's, let's wait and see. Let's wait. And I hear that UEFA has already threatened that they are just going to disqualify them in the Champions League. But What's the point of disqualifying people who have power already? Mm. You disqualify. No one will watch. No one will watch the Champions yeah. League. You disqualify exactly. them, and, and and these are the big boys. Uh, yes. You know, and 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 we and maybe uh, Last Born was very young. He doesn't know the formation of PSL. Uh, me and you, Jake, you still remember how PSL came? Yeah. Yes. And, uh, you know the old man. And that, that George Tabe was the, the El Supreme. Everybody was scared of him. No one never believed that it would happen. It happened. So I'm, I, I'm not ruling it out. I'm not ruling it out. It's all about power. It's all about power. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> so you as the viewer out there, uh, please make your comment. Is this Super League is going to be good for football or not? Now listen to the argument. They want more share as the people who are participating. All right. So I'm saying, is that reasoning wrong? I'm not saying they're right. They are saying we want more share. And remember the problem sometimes with this federation, they become big headed sometimes. And then, uh, you know, they, they, and then they don't allow new ideas coming. So sometimes you do it, do it, and people start reminding you that, by the way, we are the main guys. It's not you in the offices. I'm not saying that's what is happening, but I'm saying, you know, and I saw Boris uh, Johnson, the prime minister in England, he's also adamant, he's against it. And then, I don't know, I don't know. That is why I'm saying, you know what? There's a whole lot of things. It's politics, it's a whole lot. The bottom line is money. Jackie, what do you want to say? Uh, my brother, I agree with you. The superpowers they are playing a very big factor. If you look at your AC Milan, your, your, your Barcelona, uh, all these teams that have agreed, Man, Man, Man United, Man City, they've got money. Those are superpowers. I definitely think it's going to happen. It will definitely happen. No, no, it's no, all look, about money here. Look at this way. If Porto says I'm not coming, what difference will it make? Nothing, nothing, nothing. In fact, if Man United, Real Madrid, and Tottenham Hotspurs, and Liverpool, Man City, Juventus, and Inter Milan, Barcelona, Chelsea, I mean, all those teams, those are those are big guys, mm. and they've got so much influence financially. Yeah. So definitely, it's going to happen, and it's going to affect the revenue of yeah. these other leagues. Yeah. yeah. Watch this place. Well. We are saying we'll watch it very closely. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> no uh, last born, what are you saying? No, uh, it's true. It's true, Mr. Shavala. I mean, um, these are big guns. That's what I'm saying. The teams that were counted within this league, it's yeah. all big teams. So it can automatically change. I mean, I mean, um, swap the UEFA Champions League with this. We'll all want to watch this league because now all the big guns are there. You know, um, now we can't say that we can't see Neymar anymore uh, because the French League doesn't have, uh, well, Supersport doesn't have the rights to the French League. But now we're able to see Neymar play 
because there's a league that's going to accommodate us to watch Neymar play now. So just imagine all of those rights. No, I'm telling you, all of these sponsors will be on board. It's going to be a very interesting league because all of the big guns are within that league. And I definitely feel like that league within the first year, it will gain so much revenue, even surpassing all of these other leagues. So there will be no use for us to even watch the Champions League because now this is, here's, a, here's a healthy competition because all big guns are in one competition. So, yeah, I mean, as much as the players can complain, even the fans, but I think, as you were saying, football has evolved. Football is evolving, and there's so much business involved within it and political influence also. So these are things, there's certain things that you can't change in life. It's just unfortunate that you can't be a good Samaritan all your life. There's certain things that you can't change, and this is what's happening. So... Everyone just needs to get on board and just move with it. Let's let's listen to the reasoning. The teams, they say, want more money, right? Mm -hmm. We saw what happened when Ronaldo went to Juventus. We're not seeing uh, Italy anymore here. And then uh, we started seeing Serie A. And then that's not only that. Remember people like Perez, they spend a lot of money. How Mm -hmm. much do they pay Messi? Mm -hmm. Do, do, Do you understand? So... Are they wrong to say we want more share in the cake? I don't know. So I'm not saying what they are doing is correct. I'm saying, but uh, let's let's look let's look at all sides, all sides, and all sides of the coin, and see what is happening. You know, it's easy to say no; those guys, what they are doing is not right. But um, is it really not right? When, when people pay so much money for, for the players, you know? So you look at that and then you realize.
guys, I want to say the message special today. And then uh, I want to give you what Messi said. And then uh, the doubting Thomases, uh, you need to be rest assured. Listen to this message. As the captain, after they've won, it is always nice to lift a trophy. It is a very happy day for the group, which deserve a lot of joy. <clears throat> it is a very special to lift a trophy with the club of my life. That on its own, all right? And then we had, we had the patience to play the ball from side to side, to look for it. In the first half, it was difficult, but in the second half, they slowed down a bit. We took advantage of it. The most important sentence for me is the club of my life. So if you still doubt that Messi is going to stay with uh, Barcelona, uh, I think you need to think twice. Uh, watch the space. I think this man is still going to stay at Barcelona. All right. Now let's see. Uh, okay. Um, we know, like I said, they, they won the Copa del la Rey um, over the weekend, uh, which is quite good for them. And then, um, uh, let's see, okay. Um, this is the celebration, as you can see, of the players. And then, um, um, I I'm sure you can see that, guys. And then uh, next week, I mean, uh, on Saturday, and then I'll be giving you the nice message special. Our show was too long, hence I had to cut it short a little bit, the message special. Guys, uh, do you want to say something? No, uh, on my side, Mr. Shabalad, I can say that uh, congratulations to TTM and Chippa United. Um, it will be an interesting final, given the fact that the two teams are going through the most well. They were going through the most, but now it, it's great seeing them in the final, you know, um, you know, just representing the clubs and despite everything, but they've made it to reach that far. So, yeah, just to summarize everything, I just like to give props to Chippa United and TTM. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah. yeah, just to add on what uh, Tsepan just mentioned right now, definitely a team like Chippa United uh, as well as uh, TTM, they, 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 they're just emphasizing the fact that there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. Through thick and thin, whatever that they've gone through, it shows that now, now they're starting, they've learned the hard way and they're trying to do things differently. Hence, the, the good results are coming to them. Congratulations once more to the both teams and to their management, they are doing very well. I hope and I wish that uh, Marcel Bloomfontein Celtic uh, management will be able to learn, take a leaf out of this whole experience and be able to do things better. Thank you very much, my brothers. Guys, thank you very much. And I'm asking to viewers out there, continue to subscribe, make comments, I really appreciate. And then uh, those who wants to join our um, our our the Big R Sports program uh, community, you're more than welcome. Just drop us a, 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 a message on our WhatsApp number, which you'll see at the end of the program. I thank you.